So Google just dropped something, and honestly, it's a huge deal, but it kind of flew under the radar. And no, we're not talking about just another chatbot. This is something else entirely. We're talking about an AI that can learn, play, and basically survive in any 3D world you throw it into. It's called SEMA2, and it could be the key to unlocking AI in the real world. So let's break down why this is such a revolution. You know, for the longest time, AI has been incredibly powerful, but well, it's been trapped. Think about it. The old AI, it was like a brilliant mind stuck in a jar, only able to talk through a text box. But this new AI, it's breaking out of that jar. It's learning to act in the world. And that's exactly what SEMA2 is all about. It's this huge leap from just talking to doing. It really changes the entire game of what AI is and what it can be. Okay, so that brings us to the big central question, right? I mean, it's one thing to teach an AI to be good at one specific thing, but how do you get it to learn to act in a world it's never even seen before? How does it figure out how to survive, how to reach its goals in a totally new place, you know, like we do? That's the puzzle we're gonna try to solve right now. All right, to get there, we've gotta wrap our heads around this whole idea of moving beyond the text box. We're stepping into this new phase called embodied AI. And look, this isn't just about crunching data anymore. It's about seeing a world, figuring out what to do in it, and then actually doing it, all while learning and adapting as you go. And that is exactly where Google's SEMA 2 comes in. Now, don't think of this as just some simple upgrade to a bot that plays video games. No, no, this is a whole new framework built from the ground up to be a generalist, an agent that can handle any 3D world, whether it's virtual or, down the line, our physical one. So what exactly is SEMA? Well, the name kind of gives it away. Scalable, instructable, multi-world agent. But the real magic? The thing that sets it apart is its brain. It's powered by Google's heavy-hitting Gemini models. And we're not just talking about following orders here. This gives the agent a seriously sophisticated, almost human-like way of reasoning and making plans. And this is where it gets really, really interesting. The jump from version 1 to version 2 is just wow. SEMA 1 was basically a puppet. You had to tell it, walk forward, turn left, simple stuff. But SEMA 2, it understands intent. You can give it a big, vague goal like, hey, build a safe shelter. And it just figures it out. It breaks that big idea down into smaller steps and gets it done. That is a huge leap. But honestly, the real game changer isn't just what it can do, it's how it learns. We're talking about a self-taught agent, one that's always getting better, all on its own, without a person holding its hand every step of the way. So Google has this cool name for it, the Darwinian Self-Improvement Loop. And it's this really clever five-step cycle. First, the AI comes up with its own tasks, its own little challenges. Then it decides what success would even look like. It gives it a shot. And then, this is the crazy part, it grades itself. It evaluates its own performance and uses that feedback to make the next version of itself even better. It's literally teaching itself to be smarter. And here's why that is so, so important. This loop creates what you'd call an open-ended learner, an agent that can just keep getting better forever. It doesn't have to wait around for humans to painstakingly label millions of examples for it to learn from. And that kind of self-improvement, that autonomy, that's a non-negotiable, must-have ingredient for true artificial general intelligence, for AGI. Okay, so this self-teaching thing is amazing on its own, but it gets even better because it's combined with another really cool idea. SEMA 2 is being built to interact with the world and with us in ways that feel surprisingly, well, human. So how do you talk to this thing? Well, you're not just typing in stiff robotic commands. You can use plain old language, sure, but you can also draw out a rough sketch. You can point with arrows. You can talk to it in different languages. You can even use emojis. And this is so huge because let's be honest, the way we communicate is messy. And for robots to ever really work with us, they need to understand our messy human ways of explaining things. All right, let's talk about what might be the most human skill of all, generalization. So. Let's imagine SEMA 2 learns the general idea of gathering resources inside one particular game. And then you can drop it into a totally different game world it's never seen, like Aska or Mind Dojo, and it instantly gets it. It already knows what gathering resources means here too. It's transferring that core concept. I mean, that's exactly how our brains work, right? And it's an absolutely critical step if we want an AI that can actually function in our complex world. And that brings us to the real end game here. See, SEMA 2 isn't about building a better gamer. 
Every single design choice, every feature is pointing in one direction, taking all these skills learned in virtual worlds and putting them into physical robots that can operate out here in the real world. And the strategy for how they're doing this is actually brilliant because it's so simple. Sima 2 learns exactly like a human does. It's not cheating by looking at the game's code or anything. It just sees the pixels on the screen and uses a virtual keyboard and mouse. And that's totally on purpose. Why? Well, think about a robot. A robot sees the world through a camera, which is just pixels, and it acts with its arms. By learning this way, the skills are designed from day one to be transferable. Okay, but let's be real for a second. It's not perfect yet. Not by a long shot. Sima 2 still has some pretty big hurdles to clear. It has trouble with really long, complicated plans, it's not great at long-term memory, and super precise, delicate actions are still a challenge. But look, these aren't really failures, they're just the next items on the to-do list for the research team. So when you step back and look at the whole picture, Google's vision here is crystal clear. Step one, train the AI in millions of different virtual worlds where it's safe and fast to learn. Step two, transfer those general skills into physical robots. And the ultimate goal, embodied AGI, an AI that doesn't just think like us, but can actually act and exist right alongside us in our world. Which really leaves us with one massive question, doesn't it? With everyone so focused on making language models bigger and better, is this the real path forward? Is an AI that learns by doing, by acting and adapting in simulated worlds, going to be the thing that finally breaks AGI out of the computer and into our reality? I guess we'll have to wait and see.